the fantasy ad with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Edge. I am Richard Spill, Fantasy Six Pack.net, and joining me shortly, Jonathan Chan and Kevin Wo, also of Fantasy Six Pack.net, to bring you all the news, views, waivers, Mr. Unlimited, and uh, all sorts of great stuff to help you win your fantasy league. And win your fantasy league. Uh, we had a fun discussion about uh, about a bad trade just now in our uh, fantasy six pack league. As we are as we are recording this, uh, the game between the Chargers at the Saints is going on. Justin Herbert looking great. Three touchdown passes in the first half. It's halftime right now, so um, looking good. Uh, Jono, um, Breeze not long, well. Herbert's looking good. Uh, Breeze is not. Yeah, it's it's tough to be a good quarterback when you're afraid to throw past 10 yards you know it's it's a difficult thing to do <laughs> kev you have any stock in this uh particular anywhere in 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 your league verse for this game league verse is funny um i think i have joshua kelly in a couple places and he has been being played outplayed by uh justin jackson so that's great to see but uh other than that no not really kind of a uh, kind of a ho-hum monday night for me yeah uh, justin jackson had uh one uh one breaking run. He looked uh, looked okay, but generally speaking, this uh, running game of the Chargers looks mm, a bit mediocre. Jono, uh, it's it's whatever. You know, it's two two guys splitting carries. They look they look fine. It's been the Herbert show, like you said, but I think they look fine. Yeah. Okay. Before we get into the main meat of our program, let's uh, start talking about. I guess the big big news is, of course. Dak Prescott. Very sad news. I mean, looked horrible. As soon as you saw it, you knew. And and uh, you could tell even in the, the voice of the announcers there it was just not... Uh it was really bad, uh, and uh, so we're left with Andy Dalton, Kev. Uh, and probably, probably the we all know what the value of uh, Andy Dalton is, but uh, what about those? Uh, what about those great receivers the, on the Cowboys? What do we? What does it do to the value here? Yeah, um, I mean, we are all very familiar with Andy Dalton and his and his body of work, so not not much to say there. But uh, I mean, it's. I, a lot of people are saying it's the end of the world for the Cowboys receivers. I don't really see that. I feel like um, he's obviously not going to have the same high ceiling as Dak, but everything still kind of applies, right? Like the receivers are still there. The defense still sucks. The offense is still going to be decent. And Andy Dalton is probably going to give you 70% of what Dak's, Dak Prescott gave you. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if he was, you know, every week kind of teetering on that QB1, QB2 border. I guess, uh, Jono, it's waiting to see, wait and see if Andy Dalton is uh, a streamable commodity, if need be, in these bye weeks that are coming up. No, I mean, if you lost Dak, I think you have to go pick up Dalton. Like, I don't think you have a choice because you're, like Kevin said, you're picking up a guy in a good offense with a bad defense that somehow made the Giants look like a real offense. Well, well Jonathan, not to interrupt, but if you're Keith, you can trade Antonio oh. Gibson for Jared Goff. <laughs> I was well, trying not well, to get you all worked up again, but we'll, we'll save yeah, no, that we, till the end of the show. Don't need to be at it. <laughs> Shout out to you, Keith. I love you. We, we get, yeah. we'll save this till the end of the show uh, because that's because uh, there's less people listening. It's good, you know, people people tend to listen to the podcast about the first ten minutes before they get bored of us. <laughs> I'm just so, saying, Dalton's got Arizona and Washington coming up. Like, you're not going to find a better matchups for a guy to, to to pick up in an offense like that. And if you have guys on by, if you lost Dak, like Dalton is one of the the better targets, depending on the depth of your league. Mm. A lot of bit of, uh, I think one thing, one factor too that we have to take into account is uh, Ezekiel Elliott. His, uh, they're going to be relying on him. He is the offense. And a uh, little bit of box stacking perhaps, but I don't think they can stack the box too much because, because of the great receivers. And I want to also remark about those gallop catches at the end of the game for the, because they wanted to win it for Dak and they did it. And gallop. I, I, I just totally amazing two consecutive amazing catches in a row just blew me away didn't you uh and i think uh gallop's a guy that uh i mean cd lamb and uh you know amari cooper are one thing but gallop is a great receiver in his own right wouldn't you say kev 
Yeah, I mean, Gallup is kind of got lost in the shuffle, but he is ultra talented. Like he'd be a lot of teams, maybe wide receiver one, if not like a very high end wide receiver two, which he was the last year. It just happens that they happen to also get CD Lamb. So Gallup is super talented. And uh, I don't know if, if the Cowboys continue rolling out this three wide receiver set, it's going to be interesting to see how and he and Cooper and Lamb kind of function. All right, let's move on to another a few of other injuries going on. And uh, Dalvin Cook uh, had his uh, MRI, and uh, according to Zimmer, it went pretty well. And uh, we'll see how he does in practice this week. Uh, Jono, obviously, uh, anybody who's cuffed Madison uh, were very, very um, astute. Yeah, I mean, Madison was the is the handcuff, like the NFL handcuff <clears throat> if you're playing you know, fantasy football. But... Uh, Zimmer's, I guess, super uh, vague description of the MRI leads me to believe Cook will probably miss the next the next game. Uh, the Vikings have the Falcons. I don't think anybody's really scared of the Falcons. And with Madison go, going in there, you know, he rushed for 112 yards or whatever on 20 carries in the second half. Uh, he's more than fine as a fill-in for Cook uh, against Atlanta. And I think Cook's going to rest and then end up coming back after the bye next week. So two weeks without Dalvin Cook for people. Okay, this brings up the subject of uh, handcuffs. And, and when there is a handcuff that is at the level of, say, Madison or Latavius Murray, should owners, when during draft time, should they make the effort to try and get that cuff if they're at that level? Yeah, I mean, that's the that's the theory that I've always gone behind, is if you know the guy behind him can immediately step in and be an RB1, then it's worth owning the handcuff. Um, if you if you don't know who the guy is, then it's not. Sometimes it works out. Or sometimes that's not the case with Mike Davis. Clearly, he stepped up and he's been an RB1. Uh, sometimes, like with the Giants' backs, like it just doesn't matter if you have the, the running backs there. So it's really case by case. Um, but yeah, like you said, if you have Madison as a cook owner, like you did a good job. And this is kind of what you were expecting. All right. Uh, Kevin, okay, sticking with you, De- Deontay Johnson. Um, the Steelers are hopeful that Deontay Johnson and uh, Marquise Bouncy are available for week six. And uh, Johnson took a helmet to the back in the first half. And Tomlin will update us all on that on Tuesday. Um, the question here is, of course, and I'm going to be bringing this up later in my observations, but uh, the um, Johnson's value um, is sort of like a little bit overshadowed by Chase Claypool. Yeah, um, it's it's tough to say because he left the game due to injury, but you have to imagine when Claypool goes nuts and puts up 114 and four touchdowns like he did, uh, that he's earned himself a bigger role. Um, so I imagine now... I think the main thing we can probably take away is that James Washington is no longer a thing. And if the Steelers do go three wide, it'll be Juju, Deontay, and Chase Claypool. So Deontay might lose some targets, but I don't think he's lost all value. It's, again, it's hard to say without you know knowing how serious his injury is or, or what it's going to be like when he plays a full game. But definitely, he's. I don't think... You know, some people are saying he's going to be, you know, the, the wide receiver one. He's going to overtake Juju. I think he's kind of just one of the bunch in Pittsburgh right now. Right. Uh, now, I didn't know about this. Uh, I haven't read a thing about this, Jono, about uh, Dan Quinn being fired. Um, what are the details about it? I don't, uh, I haven't read about this at all. I'm completely unprepared. Uh, I mean, up. the details are that the Falcons stink and Dan Quinn, uh, was fired because the team is terrible and co- coaching talent, the GM was fired as well. Uh, Arthur Blank, you know, that he trusted his guys for the last, what, five years and nothing came of it other than one of the most embarrassing Super, losses, Super Bowl losses ever. So Raheem Morris takes over. He was the defensive coordinator. Uh, he's the interim head coach. And yeah, we'll see how that goes, but not very well <laughs> uh, based on what based on what they look like against the Panthers this past week. Kev, another. And uh, this, it seems interesting that the defensive coordinator uh, is taking over for a team <laughs> that has the worst defense uh, after four weeks. Yeah, I think um, it's it's almost, I, I would say it almost kind of has to do with who their court offensive coordinator is. Like, Dirk Cutter is not necessarily, like, he's had a shot at being a head coach and it didn't go well. So I think it's almost like a tryout, like it's an extended interview for them to see, hey, maybe this defensive coordinator can turn the team around and then we can just have him take over. Uh, and if it doesn't work, then they'll just go find someone else in the offseason. So I, I don't really think it has anything to do with offense or defense as much as it has to do with Dirk Cutter is not head coach material. Does it usually mean when we see this, uh, uh, Jono, that like we saw it with the Texans and Bill O'Brien, does this usually mean that uh, the team is already sort of thrown in the towel for the for the season? I wouldn't say thrown in the towel. Um, 
the Falcons, well, 0 and 5, I don't think they're going to rally and make the playoffs with the with the kind of I guess the depth of talent that they have, but they do have, you know, high priced veterans that they can't just tank a season. Like Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, like these kind of guys, they can't outright tank a season without losing them all right away. So they're gonna try their best. They're gonna, you know, see if they can turn turn whatever it is around, but they're not gonna outright, you know, throw in the towel and admit they're trying to tank. Uh, you know, with come after a season they're coming in with decently high hopes. And uh, continuing, of course, with more Falcon news, uh, Julio Jones missed the game. And so I was saying on, um, I, I put a poll in our uh, F6P chat rooms on Slack. And uh, it was that I'm, I'm kind of wondering if Julio Jones is slowly but surely turning into Roddy White. And uh, got uh, got a mixed bag of responses. I in uh, I first mentioned it on Twitter and a lot of people were were, were quite uh, they were right on board with that with that thought. But I mean, I can't help thinking that because Roddy, because Julio and Roddy White very similar. Like Roddy White was like the Julio Jones of his day, and now Julio Jones. Okay, well, like... Roddy White was never the best wide receiver in the <laughs> league. Let's let's put that Roddy White was never the best receiver in the league. I had what he had no, five straight five straight one thousand yard seasons. I think he led. I think he led. Uh, in in reception yards for uh Richard we're talking about Julio Jones Yeah this man. is Julio Jones come on Richard We're like, talking about come on Julio Jones is Different era is, though different era though you don't remember you don't remember how how big I, Roddy I White was I remember how how nice Roddy White was Roddy White was Roddy White was cool he was like a you know top 12 receiver of his his generation maybe Julio is like Julio he made wearing number 11 cool all these receivers coming in wearing single digit, they're double like the elevens. That's because Julio. Hmm. That's, but anyways, that's how we need to get but being the, cool. But the main issue here is that he's he's missing more time because it's hamstring. It continues to linger, and these these injury issues are having problems. And it's also this uh, Zacchaeus guy is starting to get uh, more and more involved. Although didn't have a great game this past weekend, but um, I mean our. Um, is Julio Jones somebody that we should be looking for owners that are, you know, it's kind of like a buy low at the moment? Should we shark, be sharking this deal with Julio? Looking yeah, for I the think, shark trade? I, th- I think if your team is like very set or like you're doing pretty well, you're four and one, three and two, five oh, something like that, and your team's pretty set, I think you could try and move Julio or move a productive receiver plus something else for Julio because the guy who has Julio, and I'm speaking from experience, is probably not doing that well. Um, so, you know, he might be desperate to move Julio for someone who can actually play right now, who can actually be on the field. And then, you know, who knows, you're probably going to make the playoffs already at four, one, five, zero. And in week 12, if Julio is completely healthy, he's, you know, wide receiver one immediately. So, uh, I, I definitely like that idea as like kind of buying low on him if you're doing well. Um, before we get into, uh, schedule changes, one last thing, Jono, uh, Philip Rivers, um, uh, Reich strongly affirmed that it, uh, he, when, when he was asked about benching Rivers, um, he says, no consideration for that. Philip is our quarterback. Um, do you think at some point, um, Brissett has to come back in if this continues? Uh, it, Rivers would have to do this for a few more games. Uh, he's got Cincinnati next week and then a bye, so they'll kind of reset things. If he loses to the Lions, then I can see it get, gaining a little bit more traction, but, uh, they paid a lot of money for Rivers, and they know what they have in Brissett. So I don't really see how much they could they 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 would improve by bringing Brissett in. I think the problem is that they're not handing off to Jonathan Taylor enough, even though he's you know leaving a lot of yards on the field. He's still their most consistent offensive player and probably their best one. But I guess when you fall behind to the Browns early, you don't really have a choice. Mm. Kev, uh, any thoughts on the Colts offense with Phillip Rivers? It's, it's definitely uh, nothing happening there. I mean, even Jonathan Taylor it doesn't look like Jonathan Taylor should. Yeah, honestly, I don't know. Rivers is, is kind of killing him. But um, if the coach says he's going to stay the starter, then I guess he's going to stay the starter. I guess he's earned that over you know Jacoby Brissett. But yeah, that offense is, is a mess right now. And um, it's, it's tough because theoretically it has all the pieces it kind of needs, but it's just not meshing right now. Maybe it's because it didn't, they didn't have an off season, but uh, you know, I guess just be patient. I don't think you can really, unless you want to really sell high on Jonathan Taylor. I don't really think you can get anything else for any of the pieces in that offense. 
I still think they're going to have to go to Brissette at some point. I mean, if this doesn't turn around, I mean, not just for one game, but this has got to like turn around like consistent. Rivers and Rivers likes jawing and that they make like a lot of fun about that. You know, Rivers is you know the trash talking quarterback of of all time. I did a piece on that at the, on the NFL Network and uh, thought it was quite funny. Some of the <laughs> some of the uh, trash talking that felt. Right. I mean, he does it even during the game. He shouts, he trash talks the offense. I mean, do, do you really want to get those guys mad? Like, <laughs> I don't understand. He has nine kids. I'm sure he just can't help but say stuff. <laughs> I suppose. All right, let's take a look at these schedule changes. And these schedule changes, uh, the Chargers buy has been... Oh, before we get to that, there's one more piece of news. And this isn't on our news board. Uh, and I want to talk about why Michael Thomas is not playing in this game uh, tonight. Jono, what's the news? Swing. You're the newsman. What's going on? What happened? What's the details? Yeah. Give us a straight... Michael Thomas was suspended for for tonight's game, Monday, because he punched a teammate in practice. Um, dude, I don't... Yo, like this... not, the jokes are... Oh, my God. Slant guard Mike? That guy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Just, you know... You're already getting so much on like on Twitter from other players calling you a diva, and then you do this. Like, come on, man. Like, slant whatever. Man, Just man. yeah, that's me. Whatever. Being he'll, called he'll... slant, being called slant man. By your <laughs> by your starting safety who just joined the team is hilarious, and then punching not the safety but another dude is hilarious. That means the <laughs> other dude was just laughing along, and you didn't even punch the dude who said it to you. Like, come on, Michael Thomas, he is the biggest difference between how good he is at football and like his level of like swag, like how cool he is. Like, <laughs> dude is such a baby. It's crazy. He's so sensitive. There's a bit yeah. of a baby there. Uh, speaking of other babies, I guess one more other thing is Dwayne Haskins. Um, little things have been leaking out about his, uh, the reasons he was benched. Um, sort of like bragging that, uh, he had his, uh, he had a 300 yard game and, uh, and even though the, the team the, the team in the locker room obviously didn't sit well, so it's and also other things have been coming out like his his uh, poor practice preparations and things like that, and game preparation is is not up to snuff, like kind of late to meetings and this sort of thing. Um, the, do you think we're looking at Dwayne Haskins being traded at some point, Kev? I mean, I guess I, the thing is like this this uh, front office and coaching staff that came in, like they have no they have no relationship, they have no. Uh, loyalty hint to him because they didn't draft him so that's why they're willing to put in Kyle Allen and Alex Smith so if the guy's acting up then and you could get anything from him I don't know what team some team might give up like a third or a fourth maybe for him I could see that I guess but um if, yeah if you're Washington you're definitely thinking quarterback this offseason yeah uh John um should they move on I mean is this is this the end of I mean what does his career look like from here on in uh I don't think he has one at this point when you're getting benched for Kyle Allen and uh, one-legged Alex Smith, I don't think you realistically, you're not going anywhere. Uh, you know, he can't read a defense, and now he can't read a room. I don't know why you're celebrating 300 yards when you, you lost. So that's not good. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Okay, meanwhile, okay, get back to uh, normal news. Uh, we always like to touch on the fun news that, that isn't too fantasy-related. But, well, the Michael Thomas stuff is, because you see on the part of, uh, well, baby, babyishness, I guess is what you're saying. Um, Chargers by move to week 11. The Dolphins Jets move to week 6. Uh, it was remarked, Kev, by Scott Fish, at what point are we going to be switching our leagues to best ball? <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you can just make that change halfway through, but it's a good idea. I mean, it's, I don't know. I, in my leagues, I'm always just, I, I have a defeatist attitude towards everything. Whatever happens, happens. It is what it is. This year is kind of just a throwaway. I'm putting the asterisk on the trophy for whoever wins. Hmm. Uh, so it is what it is. You know, if I have to, you know, if my half my team gets, I can't start them because of COVID, that's just how it's going to be. It's probably going to happen to someone else a week I'm facing them. So uh, I don't know. This whole situation is just a mess. I'm glad at least we have fantasy football to kind of you know keep me busy so that's why i wouldn't want it to be best ball because then i couldn't even make changes to my team that sucks yeah uh john the asterisk i like that uh are you already putting an asterisk on on this year too Eh, i mean you can put the asterisk on but everybody's playing under the same conditions right so it's not like it's all the same stuff unless you're gonna give you know the lakers or lightning an asterisk for a bubble for bubble wins it's it's whatever everybody's dealing with the same things if you're lucky enough to have you know a player that doesn't have COVID or a team, 
or non Titans, I think you're uh, you're okay. It's all it's all more fun trying to figure out who's gonna play, who's not. Roster churning. That's why you play fantasy. Are Dropping you... kickers two minutes before kickoff, trying to get uh, trying trying to get those lotto tickets. Man, I swapped kickers before kickoff. I should have trusted my gut. I said Seattle doesn't kick field goals. Yeah, I get they're a good offense. They don't kick field goals anymore. And I, but I still did it. I picked up the idiot, and he only, and he just kicked three PATs. <laughs> I got young. You Waku know, three you minutes before know that myself. Russell that works so well. Russell doesn't myself. settle for field goals. I hate myself. They go for, they go for it. The Seahawks go for it. Russell cooks. You should bet no better. Um. Anyway, uh, yeah, we've got some problems with the, uh, but the game tomorrow, tomorrow night, uh, Tuesday, the uh, uh, Bills and Titans will. Looks like it's going to be played, so hopefully that goes through. Anyway, uh, time to uh, take a look at uh, observations or what you learned this week. Uh, Kev, you got a very, why don't we start with you? You got a very interesting little, your first little blurb there. To, um, yeah. Bad teams are bad. Bad teams are bad. So, so Kev, yeah. can you kind of, kind of expand on bad teams are bad and, and who in particular perhaps you were talking about here? Yeah, I think I think five weeks in, I think this is the, about the time we, that we get to realize which teams are bad, and that and we just play everyone we have against them because they're just terrible. Like you play everyone you have against the Jets, you play everyone you have against the Falcons, you play everyone you have against the Cowboys, you play everyone you have against uh, probably the Jack Jacksonville Jags, and this is what we've everyone. If you have a team that plays them, you don't even worry about it. Kenyon Drake, he's been bad. Whatever, he'll get a touchdown. Like they'll just force it to him until he gets a touchdown. Like just if you have a matchup against a bad team, don't overthink it. Play your guy. They're gonna like the offense is probably gonna go nuts. And um, yeah, the bad teams are bad. This yeah. is factual. I mean, you still get those guys on Twitter though that are always asking, should I start this guy? Should I start? uh darren waller uh or or uh, yeah i, I mean you know, that's the thing is like should i start darren just, waller against the jets you know? <laughs> yeah it's like oh the jets are number one against tight ends are oh, fantastic they give up 50 million points like who cares <laughs> just start them yeah yeah <laughs> well yeah you're right uh and also also dst uh obviously i think that's kind of a rule of thumb and uh yeah Bad quarterbacks are bad. And so, but it's, I know the Jets are bad, but, uh, you know, you're a Flacco guy, Kev. It's, I mean, there's a little bit of help, hope there, isn't there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mr. Flacco. I, a, I mean, I'm a Flacco guy, but I am not insane. Like, the dude is handing off to Frank Gore and throwing to Jeff Smith with <laughs> Adam Gase as his coach. I don't think anyone <laughs> could succeed under these. Con- like, you put Patrick Mahomes there. And he would struggle to put up 17 points. That's true. That's true. Adam Gase. Uh, why isn't he fired? Everyone else getting fired. You know, better coaches than him. Better coaches than, I mean, Dan Quinn. Okay. He had a rough run, but. The Jets know. really want Lawrence. I guess that's what they want. That hippie. <laughs> yeah. Lawrence the hippie. Anyway, uh, Jono, uh, what'd you learn this week? We all observe. Um, I didn't hear. I guess I, I, I observed that. Uh, Amari Cooper is losing snaps every single week. Uh, week one, he had 94%, and then 91, 79, 76, and 63 uh, against the Giants' uh, snap percentage. And I don't remember hearing anything about an injury. I think something popped up this morning. Um, but it's concerning that the theoretical wide receiver one for the Cowboys is losing so many snaps, uh, almost 30% of the snaps since week one. Um, I understand that CD Lamb is progressing quicker than most people would have thought, but... Cooper losing this many snaps and only catching one pass yesterday doesn't bode well. Uh, especially with Dalton coming in, if people are willing to pay for that wide receiver one uh, tag that he was getting uh, with Dak, I guess most people would would be smarter than that right now. But if somebody's willing to pay you for a wide receiver one price, I would probably uh, dump Cooper if you have the chance. Well, for the right, if the price is right, Kevin, you yeah, on board? Yeah, if somebody's willing to pay you for a wide receiver one like price, yeah, don't don't undersell him. Oh no, uh, Kev, uh, any thoughts on that? Uh... Uh, on Cooper, and because we, we were just talking about the Cowboys, and so, so focus on Cooper for a bit. Kev, your thoughts on Amari Cooper moving forward? Yeah, um, it's just messy. Um, it, this is one of those things that I think, like Jonathan said, if you can kind of offload him, like I don't necessarily think Cooper will be bad going forward. I just think if you can get someone who's high on him to trade for him, you don't have to deal with that uncertainty. Like that seems like a good idea. So. 
Uh, it's just one of those situations that might take like even if like let's just say cooper goes absolutely nuts next week and dawn targets him 18 times like i'm still not even sure two weeks from now he might he he's gonna get a sell healthy amount of targets or even if he gets uh, vice versa if he gets two targets next week the week after he could easily get like 16 targets like you just don't really know right now but um i don't know have faith i think the cowboys offense will probably be okay honestly Speaking of usage, and this this has to go with uh, Juju Smith-Schuster. Like, okay, Deontay goes down and Claypool has a big game. We all know that was fantastic. 39 fantasy points. It was just blow, blew the doors off. And But uh, in all this, I kind of wondered, like, where's Juju? Like, where where was Juju? Like, in all this, how come that I see Juju with only, like, four fantasy points? in this game like why i mean was somebody keying on him or what's going on because juju has not been i mean he had one one big game before the bye but i mean this is it's really juju's not been the juju you kind of drafted and i'm kind of i i I didn't want to put him in the panic category yet but um i'm sort of reaching for the cabinet where i keep the key for the for the panic button uh because juju doesn't seem to be um central to um roethlisberger's thinking right now i think it would be well deontay being out uh, he might be forced to uh go to juju and uh that is if he's not playing we'll find out tomorrow on tuesday if, if uh deontay johnson is uh gonna be okay or not but um but uh, John, where is Juju? He's uh, missing. He's in a it's an interesting spot for him because he, of course, he started the year really well, sixty nine yards and two touchdowns. Everybody thought, oh, wide well, receiver one, Juju's back. We're all good. Um, but he hasn't done anything really since he hasn't passed sixty nine yards in any game. And even in a game where Deontay Johnson leaves early, Juju saw only five targets, and then Chase Claypool has you know eleven targets, uh, seven catches with were which were combined more than more catches and more targets than he had seen in his first three games so it's uh i don't know if it was more you know the eagles weren't keying on claypool or you know they were really keying in on juju but it's tough to say i i personally haven't seen the steelers game so i don't know what they're doing maybe juju's just you know a pure slot guy now maybe antonio brown was right uh at this point i i don't know maybe with Deontay Johnson out, if he's out, maybe they'll set a new game plan where Juju's, you know, the number one and he'll get a whole bunch of targets. Ooh, I'll pass that question to you, uh, Kev. Uh, Jono brought up, was Antonio Brown right? Yeah, Antonio Brown is always right. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, why is it in 2020 and now this? Like, come on. No, seriously. Juju, Juju is just, I mean, I think it's okay. We can be wrong. Juju might have just been a guy. Like, he might not have been the wide stud wide receiver one we all thought he was. But I do think something that's interesting Jonathan brought up is uh, his slot usage. He played after the after Deontay Johnson injury, he played uh, 42 slot, slot, uh, slot snaps. Is that hard to say? 42 slot snaps? What just happened? Um, but, uh, yeah, so he, he's playing primarily in the slot, and Chase Claypool is playing outside. Uh, I don't know. Is Ben normally a slot? I don't think he normally uses his slot guys like crazy. No, but I did see a quality quality targets going Ebron's way. Well, Ebron is just so good at football, you can't help but throw him the ball. <laughs> yeah, not actually, but, he, but, you know, he's decent. Okay, so that's our topics. But anyways, anybody who owns Juju Smith's user, don't panic. Don't panic. He's okay. Um, but keep your eye on the situation. That's all I'm saying. And uh, watch carefully. Time for moving on up. John, I'll start with you. Who is moving on up this week for you? Yeah, uh, pretty easy one. Michael Hardman, uh, part of the league's you know best offense, and now Sammy Watkins is going to miss multiple weeks, shocking everybody. And Hardman's the next guy up. I know uh, Robinson. You know, Demarcus Robinson has been the guy, but Hardman's come on the last couple of weeks, uh, scored a long touchdown a couple of weeks ago, and that had 50 yards this past week against the Raiders. Um, when they involve Hardman, he looks good. I'm not sure. I'm sure Andy Reid has a good reason why he's not involving Hardman a little bit more. But uh, with the speed, game-breaking ability, if he gets five targets a game, you're looking at somebody that's a threat to score a touchdown on every, every single play. So, yeah, Sammy Watkins out. I think Hardman's the, uh, the wide receiver, too, there, and he'll play well. I yeah I completely agree. If you uh, I think the it's like the Seahawks, David Moore is a good own, but uh, when when it comes to the third wide receiver, um, obviously Hardman is a better is the better third. When you say Kev, do you own him anywhere, Kev? You're the kind of guy that would own own a, a Miko Hardman. <laughs> uh, shockingly, I don't think I do own him anywhere. I think the the price to get him was just too high for me during draft time. 
Mm. I don't really own him anywhere. Did we? Did we? Any mention of Demarcus Robinson? Any interest? Mm, nah. Well, Robinson would be the floor guy. Yeah. Like he mm. would. He would be the floor guy. Hardman's the ceiling guy. And Robinson always seems to pop up when when Watkins gets hurt. But I'm going for the ceiling here. That's fair. We all like ceiling guy. I'll go next. Uh, my guy, uh, panic button is Zach Ertz. Uh, Ertz uh, scored a whopping one fantasy point. One, actually, 1.1 1. 1 fantasy points against the Steelers, uh, not being used. Uh, at San Francisco, he had five fantasy points. Just like five, it's, I mean, one reception of six targets. Uh, I think a lot of it has to go on Wentz. The reason that Zach Ertz isn't doing so well, obviously, um, Wentz just is not uh, doing, Wentz is doing okay for quarterback fantasy points generally, but I don't know, he's not finding Ertz like he used to. Um, it seemed like before, even before Dallas Goddard got hurt, it seemed like um, Ertz was on the way out. But Ertz has already has already been saying that uh, this is probably looking like his last year in Philadelphia. So I think it's starting to show up that uh, I don't know if you own if you own Ertz or if you drafted him uh, in the early part of the draft, you you kind of got yourself uh, in a bit of a muddle. Uh, Ertz is just not the Ertz of old. He's dropped out of the top 10, well out of the top 10, and uh, serious business. Uh, any shares, Jono, in Ertz? No, nothing in Ertz. I've never really been one to take tight ends early. Uh, I probably should, now that the position is an absolute dumpster fire outside of Kelsey and Kittle. Uh, but just the just a fun, well, perspective stat on Ertz. Uh, through five games, Ertz has 145 yards. Uh Travis Fulgham had 152 yesterday in one game. So I don't know if I want to blame Wentz, but that's bad. Mm. When the 17th receiver on your depth chart is outscoring your, you know, high paid tight end in, in one game. That's not good. Kev, Zach Ertz, is he just a guy? Yeah, he's awful. I'm sick. I drafted him. Everyone told me he was safe. He was not safe. He's not good at football. Oh, okay, I went too far. He's not that good at football. Or it's not that he's not good at football. Uh, situationally, it's something is going on. Um, he's currently the tight end 18 on the season, but he's ran the most routes and he's fourth in targets. And in his last couple games since Dallas Goddard has been hurt, he has played 115 of 121 snaps. So he's out there. He is just not doing anything. And I don't know if it's him. I don't know if it's Wentz, but I just don't see it getting better when everyone else gets healthy. Like Jeffrey, uh, the rookie, I'm forgetting his name, Jalen Rager. Rager. And then John Hightower. Jackson, like, when they all get healthy, like, are, is he is he just going to be able to like feast? Because it's I, I, don't, I don't know. I just don't see it. Like, I, I don't know if you can get anything from Ertz. Like if you can shoot, I don't know. I would if I was an Ertz owner and I am and that and I would just try to package him with someone to like pretend like I'm making a downgrade. While secretly yeah. making an upgrade, you know what I mean. <laughs> I don't even think he has name value anymore. Okay. Yeah, just like, uh, hey, oh, are you happy with Hayden Hurst, man? Like, hey, let me give you Ertz and and someone else, and I'll take Hayden Hurst from you. I'd rather have Hayden Hurst going for. It. Yeah, yeah, and Hayden Hurst is a bust himself too. Um, but at least you drafted Hayden Hurst in like the eleventh round or whatever the hell. Uh, Kev, who are you? But uh, moving on with you, you can stick him with you. You have your own guy who's panicking. Who are you panicking on? Yeah, it's 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 a uh, Mark Ingram, like. Uh, Obviously, people were panicking on him a couple weeks in, but I think the panic meter is like I'm holding the button down now. Like he's borderline, <laughs> he's borderline drop worthy, like in super shallow leagues wow. because I mean it's just nothing is really there for him. Like I, if any excuse you can think of, it's kind of it just don't doesn't really work anymore. Like oh game plan, well you know they're blowing teams out. Uh, okay, well maybe in get, he'll catch more passes and he's only caught three passes all season. Okay, well, at least maybe he's going to score a touchdown. Well, you know, um, we all saw J.K. Dobbins score a bunch of touchdowns and, you know, Lamar is obviously going to do his thing. It's just, he plays like 30, like, if you look at his numbers, he plays 35% of the snaps. He averages around 10 carries a game. Like, this is just, I, I don't know. Like, I get that he's on a great offense, but he's in a three-headed backfield. Uh, and on top of that, he kind of does look a little slower than he did last year. So I don't know. I, I'm panicking on marking room. Would I drop him? No, because he's such a great guy. But uh, I definitely am probably not starting it. Yeah, he's, uh, like you say, yeah, just uh, 5.7 uh, fantasy points, uh, half PPR. Uh, I think the thing you look for in a, in a good running back is that if they also at least get three or four receptions in the game, you know, that's kind of like the the ideal. You want you want a, a rushing a, 
a good rusher, but who also receives a few balls too. And um, I think he's been targeted like, what, well, looking here, just adding it up. He's yeah, he has five targets on the season. Five targets. Three yeah, five targets. Yards. Like, yeah. It's not great. It's not yeah. going well. Yeah, so it's just looking at the snap percentage quickly here. Mm. Yeah, low 30s. Mm. Not good. Uh, John, do you have any thoughts on Mark Ingram and the, and the Baltimore backfield in general? I mean, Gus Edwards even, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, can't really put it better than Kevin did and said it, but it's it's a tough thing to try to bet which one of those three guys is going to, you know, score a touchdown or catch the pass. Or, well, I guess you know Mark Ingram's not going to be catching passes, but it's, it's a tough thing. Uh, you can't really drop Ingram, like Kevin said, but can't really trust him to do anything else either. So it's a it's a very tough spot with him. Would you consider it, John, a similar situation to the Rams? Um. Not super similar because Daryl Henderson has been being productive. Yeah, yeah Daryl Henderson's actually productive, and he looks like the best one. Like it's not like there's three guys that can do kind of the same thing. Daryl Henderson's been producing, and he looks very clearly like the best running back there. So it's it's a little it's a different situation. Mm, okay, uh, sticking with you, Jono, your turn for panic. Uh, yeah. Um, that's I'll why I bring Rams. up the Rams. <laughs> yeah, stick with the Rams. I'll go uh, Tyler Higby. I was never a uh, a Higby guy coming into the year, I thought him being drafted as like tight end five or six based off of a five game sample last year was kind of crazy. And other than one game in week two where he scored three touchdowns on five targets, um, he's been very eh. He hasn't gone past, you know, 40 yards in any of his other four games. He hasn't been targeted more than five times in any of his games. And now Gerald Everett's coming in. He led the Rams in receiving yards in week five. He scored a rushing touchdown in week four. Uh, Sean McVay is trying to get Everett involved, and when he was healthy last year, he was the receiving tight end and not Tyler Higby. So I think as things progress, I think Everett gets more involved and Higby goes back to being you know, the occasional pass catcher, but the blocking tight end to keep Jared Goff upright to make sure Keith's trade is worth it for him. Yeah, I saw <laughs> Jared Everett make a Gerald Everett, yeah, um, picking up, picking up the... Uh... Picking up good yardage and not uh, and not Higby, uh, Kev. Uh, do you have Higby anywhere? Or you weren't even high on Higby at the beginning of the year, were you? No, I was never high on Higby. Just uh, the offense is Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, run game. Everyone else is secondary or tertiary or whatever. So I wasn't high on Higby, but he had a couple good weeks, you know. Uh, I still think he's a streamable, but if you own him, you don't really. Uh, you might not need to hang on to him uh, for any streaming or so forth. Um, before we get to uh, Mr. Unlimited, uh, can we get a game update? Does anybody have a game update of what's been going on? Um, uh, I believe it's 20 to 13 for the Chargers still um, entering the fourth or close to it. Uh, it's uh, my feed is a commercial right now, but uh, fantasy wise, Herbert hasn't done anything since the first half. He's right. lost me points in Scott Fishbowl since the first half. So let, let's let's pick it up, buddy. All right. Okay. It's time for our, one of our favorite segments. It's time for Mr. Unlimited. Got to be unlimited. You got to be unlimited. And uh, this uh, this week, uh, Kevin and I will nominate, and Jono will choose uh, one of our nominations for. Uh, Mr. Unlimited. Mr. Unlimited, of course, is is uh, out, not only just an outstanding player, but a player that a player that stuck out was an, a player of importance in Week Five. A player that not just not necessarily the the best highest fantasy point gainer, but uh, but a player that uh, uh, stuck out. And um, I chose uh, Dak Prescott before Dak, Dak Prescott left. He put up. Uh, Pretty decent fantasy numbers. He scored a touchdown, uh, a receiving touchdown, sort of like a Philly special sort of sort of thing. And uh, and they won the game. Now it wasn't Dak Prescott under center that won the game at the time, but it was done for him. So I'm saying, as a tribute, as part of a sort of a a little bit of a gift to uh, Dak Prescott, I say we give uh, Dak Prescott the. Uh, the Mr. Unlimited for this week, and uh, that's that's my that's 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 uh, that's my my push for uh, for Dak Prescott. Uh, Kevin, all right, I'm putting Jonathan in a bind here. My Mr. Unlimited is Patrick Queen, linebacker, Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> The dude balled out. 22 DST points. No, I'm just kidding. But he did. Uh, just shout out to my guy. Uh, my Mr. Unlimited is uh, Chase Claypool. Uh, what What can I say? Um, 
114 yards, four touchdowns. It's not like they were all easy plays, although some of them were kind of gifts, and I feel like most people could have scored them. But I think that Steelers offense really bailed out their defense, which for some reason couldn't stop the Eagles. And I, I don't know. How can I, – I don't know. 114 yards and four touchdowns, like just he won the game. Yeah. Argue against me, Jonathan. I dare you. Okay, uh, Jono, uh, Dak Prescott, uh, sentimental choice, or Chase Cool, Chase Claypool, the breakout guy? Who's it going to be? Uh, I'm disqualifying Dak because he left the game when the Cowboys were losing. So he Heartless. had no passing touchdowns, Heartless. no passing touchdowns, and an interception, and he was losing to the Giants. So I'm going with Chase Claypool because he's also Canadian. So. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, 114 yards, four touchdowns, just... Is Chase Claypool, like, a quarter Asian or something? Yeah, you, you, you're you looking him up also, yeah. I'm That's looking sorry. at his face right now, this is the first time <laughs> I've ever seen his face, and, uh... Yeah, it's a cor- I'm claiming him. <laughs> I, I I don't know, but <laughs> I'm going with Claypool on this one. Just incredible performance from from a rookie playing his what fifth game as the per, as like the perceived wide receiver four, uh, coming out and doing that against a, you know a half decent Eagles team. Regardless of how how badly their offense is falling apart, the defense is still pretty good. So uh, yeah, I'm going Claypool on this one. That's our uh, yeah, that's yeah. that's the choice. It is Jace Claypool is Mister Unlimited. Oops. Well, I guess he gets a, a, it's actually That's supposed it for the to be show, guys. Unlimited. Unlimited. <laughs> no, the show's not over. It's just the wrong clip. But that's but uh, Chase Claypool. It's actually uh, kind of it's kind of good to have a bit of a music thing, I guess, better than just Mr. Unlimited. Uh, Russell, actually, Russell himself could have been Mr. Unlimited uh, quite easily. I mean, uh, that drive, like I don't know why they should have just. Do you agree with that that play at the end of the game? Should they have just kicked the field goal? The Vikings should they maybe? Kept? Nah, you got to go for it Got against it. against the Seahawks. Like you just gotta if you can secure a chance to win, like you can you just do it. Yeah, I guess it was probably the best policy they, they would have. I mean, won. if you if you saw that screenshot, like whoever it was, was it Madison? I don't, he just missed the hole. Like the play call was right. The dude just missed the hole completely. Yeah, that yeah, was bad. Okay, uh, now we've got to look at the. Uh, we gotta start looking at week six now. We gotta see who we gotta pick up on the way over wire. And uh obviously um Chase Claypool. Chase Claypool is also <laughs> Ad- is, is the is mention. Is Abbotsford known for being uh an Asian hotspot? Uh Abbotsford, British Columbia. British yes. Columbia is known as an Asian hotspot. All right, yeah, Chase Claypool is Asian. We're claiming him. <laughs> uh, Let's go. Knock it off with the pro- profiling Let's and all this go. go. <laughs> Where the hell? <laughs> Richard, you're from B- you, you, you 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 know BC well. I know BC quite well. Yes, uh, uh, there's a large Asian community there. A lot of it, I, yeah. a lot of a lot of Asian people I used to work with over, over there. And, and uh, in fact, one of them had the same uh, name as your. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he he passed away. His name was Ed Chan. Um, no, probably no relation because I know Chan's quite common. Uh, it's like Smith and Jones, right? So. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I had, I had a lot of, uh, yeah, there was quite a large, uh, uh, Asian community in, uh, in Vancouver. So, yeah, a lot of fond memories of, uh, friends, a lot of, a lot of Asian friends back in, back in Canada. So, uh, yeah, um, and Chase Claypool, yeah, you're gonna, but, but we don't do this, but uh, now you got me profiling this, doing this. Pro- <laughs> 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 oh, you gotta be doing this profiling thing. Of just, 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 where he grew up, you know. Uh, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, <laughs> and we're claiming Clay, Chase, Chase Claypool now. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, but anyways, we're talking about, yeah, Chase Claypool, obviously top of, if he's available. He's not available in our uh, Fantasy Six Pack League, of course. Is, is everybody good gets claimed. Our league is so, everybody plays good generally, except something we're going to talk about later, Kev. Not right yet, at the end of the show. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think you got to pick up, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to pick a, I'm going to pick a guy from here because uh, obviously there's no waiver running backs to pick up. Is there, uh, is there anybody, mm-hmm. is there anybody uh, worth picking up for the RB? Is there, is there an RB? No, this, this, this is a very thin running back week. Um, there's all the, you know, the, everything was status quo for running backs, uh, except for Dalvin Cook getting hurt. Madison's available in 60% of leagues. So... If you know the the Cook one doesn't have Madison, he's sort of widely available, only forty percent rostered. Uh, if you really want to go out there, you can 
pick up JD McKissick. Uh, mm. He has saw eight eight targets for t- in two straight games, and he is RB five in terms of targets. So if you're in PPR league, you want somebody with a floor, uh, or you're dealing with injuries or bye weeks, and McKissick could help with like six or seven points in a PPR league. Mm. So it's not terrible, but yeah, uh, RBs this week are not not great for the waiver wire. Oh, okay. I will say though, if someone has dropped J.K. Dobbins, just go grab him because he looks by far like the best uh, running back in the Baltimore backfield. Oh, okay, mm. uh, that makes sense. Words of wisdom from Kevin. Words of wisdom. No, I was gonna, I was gonna say Travis Fulgham because I don't know. Alshon Jeffrey was supposed to return. He didn't. Deshaun Jackson was supposed to return. Didn't. Um, seems like uh, the guy that, uh, got, although. Um, John Hightower got a got a a wider a, a touchdown um, target in the in the end zone, but he couldn't catch it because because Wentz doesn't throw the ball as well as he used to for some reason. Um, Travis Fulgham, though, he seems to be able to find him. Fulgham, um, I think I, I I think you're picking up Fulgham mainly be, uh, just as just in case um, Wentz gets receivers or, or Wentz can throw. But I think, uh, yeah, it is pretty thin for waivers when you when you're looking at Travis Fulgham. But it seems like I think Fulgham can play. He looks he looks good out there. Six two two fifteen. Uh, player profile comparison to Michael Gallup. Okay, yeah, it's not bad. Let's see what mock draftable has to say. Problem with Fulgham is you can't and Claypool has the same issue. You can't blow too much of your budget or use yeah. too high of a priority because there no. are like fifteen other guys on each team. Yeah, you have no idea what the target distribution and, and just look in, like. In general, they're wide receivers. Yeah. Yeah, well, I yeah, you can you can pick up uh, if you want to uh, kind of put this guy too. It's like Colin Johnson. He's another guy up there. I actually, I actually don't know who that is. He he plays for the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars. All right, you said enough. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but he's uh, yeah, he got um, four targets, three receptions, thirty yards, and a touchdown. Just a nobody who got a touchdown. I couldn't think of anybody to put on the list, so I put in him. Yeah, it's a pretty it's a pretty light week. It happens sometimes. Um, yeah, have you got anybody, Kev, that you like on this list? That's, I mean, Cameron, I see some of the names that we've got up here. Gerald Everett, Cameron Bray, Trey Burton. There's really nobody to get except Claypool. Yeah. Uh, I mean. Uh, let me take a look at the trendings. There's Andy Dalton. <laughs> that's what people, trendings people. is always good. Yeah, I mean, I think legitimately Andy Dalton is going to be like one of the like he's going to be a top 15 quarterback going yeah. forward. Madison. I'm very confident in that. Um, Khalif Raymond. I guess because Corey Davis is out. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Corey that, Davis yeah. is out with, uh, oh yeah, that was something in the news too. Okay. He yeah. Had, he's uh, on COVID. the COVID list. Yeah. Brandon Cooks. I'm not going to touch the Cookers. Uh, Jimmy Graham. Just looking at the trends. See what people are picking up. Usually you can tell, like you, you mentioned JD McKissick as he's on the list. Chase Edmonds already owned by everybody. Jalen Guyton. What about him? Uh, no. if, if Keenan Allen can't play next week, then yeah, maybe Keenan Allen left today's game with a back injury. So if he can't play next week, then sure. Herbert has to huck it deep to someone. Mm, yeah. Uh, I guess that's pretty much, it's such a thin, uh, waiver, but I guess it's time to start talking about drops. I mean, if t- I guess basically there's nobody to drop it. There's nobody to pick up, but if you do manage to get lucky to, uh, get Chase Claypool or somebody else who happened to be, that we mentioned that. Like Madison, maybe if he's out there, uh, you might be able to get him, but don't doubt it. In twelve team, I don't you don't you see uh, Madison s- sitting out there. But uh, it's time to drop somebody. Uh, Kev, you got to drop somebody to get Clay- Trace Claypool. Um, yeah, I'm dropping Zach Pascal. Uh, it was a nice one week where we thought he might be the wide receiver one there, but uh, that offense is just there's too many random dudes. Like it, I, I'm counting T.Y. Hilton sadly as just another random dude. But there's just too many between Hilton, uh, Zach Pascal, Jack Doyle, well, Alec like Cox, Trey Burton. There's another receiver who had like 42 yards this game. I forgot his name. Uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. If not, it's fine. You know what I mean? Then, then yeah. they've got the run game, which they want to be a run heavy team. So I just don't like Pascal is not someone I'm willing to go out there and start. No, especially when you've got a uh, a quarterback in Philip Rivers who uh, manages just six fantasy points. <laughs> that yeah. kind of tells you uh, um, that. 
He's not getting the ball to anybody for any yardage much anyway. And uh, Johnny, you got a very a little bit of a surprising name up there. Um, are you saying that Raheem Mostert owns this backfield? I mean, is that really surprising? Raheem Mostert came back a week earlier than he was supposed to. Jarek McKinnon was supposed to get 50% of the touches. He had one carry and two catches for five yards. Raheem Mostert completely took over. And the, the Niners were behind. Uh, they, they, they were getting blown out. And Mostert coming off a, a knee sprain still played all the snaps and McKinnon did nothing. So why would I keep him unless you think most is going to get hurt there's like come on i don't oh well i no i completely agree because yesterday uh, last week i was asked uh who you should move on from or who you should try to sell high and i said uh sell high for Jarrett mckinnon and uh you know because he had that big week and i thought it's a good time to sell him. maybe you could get trick somebody into giving you a miles sanders david johnson somebody somebody a, a running back who's sort of in a bit of a slump or something might be able to get some for him but too late now. Too late now. Too late now. Too late now. Jarrett McKinnon's already droppable. I think you're right. I think Jarrett McKinnon uh, is droppable. Um, but I don't know. You, you didn't. You didn't really know because Jarrett McKinnon had such a great week, right? I suppose it's. So he's still good at football, wouldn't you say, Kev? Yeah, he's fine. I mean, it's just you know, do you want the back? How do how do you even phrase this? He's the backup in a three headed monster, and then when he's the starter, he's not necessarily even the starter. My guy is uh, Matt Ryan. Now, don't yell at me. I know I know you guys have a sort of a like for Matt Ryan, I think, don't you? Oh, you used to, anyway. Uh, Matt Ryan, yeah, not very good. Uh, not really good numbers these past three weeks. Uh, 12 fantasy points, 12, or 11, 12, and this week only 7 fantasy points. Um, probably helped Dan Quinn lose his job. And uh, really... Uh, Pretty ugly numbers. I mean, first two weeks of the season, just great. But I mean, Seattle is the number one against, uh, is the number one team that to play against, uh, if you, for quarterbacks to play against. And Dallas, a similar thing. But every other matchup, you look at other matchups, you got Minnesota, Detroit, and Carolina, they're all like, a little bit middle of the pack so i mean he's playing carolina again and it, i mean if you can't if you can't get a little more fantasy points than that against carolina then something's wrong and he was projected like i mean he's projected like in in the uh in our sleeper league he projected like 20 points a week generally on average and he's not even coming close to that so i say uh Drop Matt Ryan. It doesn't look like there's any good uh, matchups. He can he can he can go back out there. He can find another quarterback if available. Pick up Herbert, maybe somebody. Goff. We'll talk about that in a minute, Kevin. Not yet. <laughs> uh, any thoughts on Matt Ryan? Uh, are you guys Matt Ryan? Uh, I mean, he's rosterable once Julio comes back. Maybe you have to bench him until until Julio's healthy. But it's a completely different offense when when. <laughs> excuse me. Bless you. One yeah, more. Bless you. <laughs> uh, there you go. Man, four. Uh, it's a completely different offense when when Julio's playing, and once he's back healthy, I think. Uh, Matt, I mean, Matt Ryan should be rosterable, and you know, even if he's not an elite QB one, he'll be in the QB one conversation mm. when he has all his weapons back. Yeah, uh, I suppose so. Kev, you uh, you on board? If you had Matt Ryan, would you drop him? Um, I wouldn't drop him, but I'd kind of throw him into that little candidate of streamers, depending on the matchup. I don't know who he's playing next week, and I will look at that right now. But they probably have a pretty soft schedule, so. They are playing the Vikings, who suck. So no, I'm not dropping Matt Falcon. Uh, Matt Ryan. Okay. Uh... Yeah, they're playing. Well, they're playing the Vikings, the the Lions, the Panthers. So that's three weeks in a row <laughs> you can comfortably roll out Matt Ryan. Well, they played the Panthers just last week and he got seven points. No Julio. Mm. Okay. Dude, that... They got a new coach now, dude. Come on, like Dan Quinn was holding them back. Okay. Still say drop. He's droppable. Droppable. Drop. But it's dropless, so I'm saying drop. For uh, spec ads, uh, I'll stick with me. Um, pick up Matthew McFarlane. I think McFarlane's going to get a little more opportunity. Um, I don't think James Conner is really taking over this backfield. He's, just, uh, he's okay. He's uh, moving the offense, but he's not central at all to the uh, to the offense. He's doing okay. Let me just check uh, Conner's numbers. Uh, he had an okay week, uh, like 13, 13, 80 points, uh, 22 the, the before the, uh, before they're enforced by there. And, uh, so, um, I think it's okay to stash. I would stash if, since it's such a light waiver week, eh, you can stash a guy like, uh, 
Anthony McFarland. If you if you've got room to stash, like probably one guy in our league will probably have room to stash. <laughs> Which not yet, Kev. We'll get to it. Um, but uh, yeah, stash uh, Anthony McFarland is my stash. Kev, you're up. Who are you stash? Who stash? Spec ad. You need a you need a spec ad yeah. stash. Who's your stash? You got a stash a spec. I'm gonna go through my teams. Jonathan, why don't you go first while I go through my teams and see who's right. stashed? Yep. Uh, Tyler Johnson. Not the uh, former Tampa Bay Lightning hockey player. Uh, this is the what wide receiver four for the Bucks. Uh, with Chris Godwin hurt, Justin Watson was hurt, uh, Scotty Miller's hurt. Why is he five? Excuse me. Uh, Scotty Miller's hurt. Mike Evans is hurt. Tyler Johnson played pretty well against the Bears. Uh, six targets, four catches, sixty-one yards. Um, you know he set University of Minnesota records in his four years there. He's not a bad receiver like he's coming in he's a rookie but i guess a tough secondary he played pretty well and he looks to have brady's trust i don't know if that was not due to necessity but if he continues to play well he gets better builds more rapport with brady uh i don't see why he's not worth a stash uh, considering we haven't heard anything about uh chris godwin yet so could be another week where uh where tyler johnson could be a a decent deep league uh uh, stash okay yeah that's that's sound sound. Uh, oh, and the Bucks have the Packers next week, so they're gonna have to throw. Right. What's the status of Scotty Miller, by the way? Is it... Oh, dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, sure that was be. unfortunate. Yeah. Might be was... Be. Oh boy. <laughs> that was an unfortunate turn of events. Okay. Enough said on Scotty Miller. <laughs> <laughs> He's still hurt. He's not full status. No. Like they haven't. Yeah. Okay. Oh well, I was just wondering if. Well, he's not out for the. What is he out for the year? No, no, no. He's just you know him and Evans. They're just kind of you know ailing, it, like nagging little things that they're trying to deal with. But they're not. Uh, they're very clearly not full strength. Uh, okay, because I hadn't heard anything about that. Just that. Uh, yeah, the Evans. Well, although Evans, Evans did. Evans did okay. Godwin is the guy. To, well, nothing really much to uh, go on for uh, for Brady, but uh, so I like that pick. Kev, you got uh, we wasted enough time. We've given you a little bit of extra time by sort of mumbling our way through. Well, especially me, and I appreciate it. And in return, I have come up with absolutely nobody. <laughs> You've got <laughs> um, no spec, not even like Travis uh, Homer no, or no spec. Oh, those guys are already picked up, aren't yeah. they? Full no? Fulgham's not a spec now, not after that performance. Yeah, I mean. A lot of these guys are just you know, pick up the pick up your local backup. Mm. And Travis Homer is actually nice. I mean, Travis Homer is a good player. Um, let's see, it Irv Smith. Smith. Are we interested in Irv Smith? Uh, four, four catches, four catches, sixty-four yards. That's not bad, honestly. As bad as tight end is, Irv Smith could be a could be a guy. No, he's not going to be a guy, guys. Could be a guy. Who could be a guy? Come on, there's got to be a guy who could be a guy. A guy who could be a guy. A guy who can be a guy. Chris Thompson? No, thank you. Jared Stidham. How? Oh. Uh, how about? Uh... I mean, have people jumped on Damian Harris yet? I assume there's no, like. Come on, that's, yeah. No, I, I assume maybe, maybe with a super bye week and COVID, uh, the waiver run on him wasn't as big as it should have been. No, I mean, I'm assuming I'm assuming Tony Pollard doesn't count, right? No, like, Snagalore. No, Snagalore. No, Aglor. No, 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 no. Aglor can't even catch. Mm. Well. He seems to have, much to the annoyance of a lot of Philadelphia fans, he seems to be catching better <laughs> with Derek. Carr. No, he just he just makes the big plays. That's all. Yeah, that's all he does. No, but, you're right. But you, like they're not going to show the, the drops anymore. They don't care. No, they don't. They don't. But he's he's, he's he, he does make the big I mean, player, and he looks all right, good. I, I, I have a stash. Okay, kind of a stash. Okay. If Brashad Perriman is available, he might people might have forgotten about him. I absolutely hate recommending the Jets, but Jets. they just targeted somebody named Jeff Smith eleven times. I knew so, about Jeff Smith. I knew about him. I knew about him. No, he's, not, he's not just a somebody. Of course you knew about him, Richard, but uh, they, that doesn't mean they should have targeted him eleven times if they're trying to win a football game. But he was, you know, well, like you got it. We had to force one out of you, but we got one. Because usually you're just brimming with them. I remember in week one, you said, "How long have we got?" Like for for spec ads, and you just yeah. Well, now see. I think everybody's <laughs> now I already have opinions on people, and I think a lot of them are bad and not worth picking up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we're about to wrap up the show now, Kev. You can talk about a bad trade in our league now that we're near the end of the show. But don't name names. Just tell us like what you're pissed off about. Oh, uh, in one of my leagues, a man who. Great man. Love this man. Fantastic guy. Uh, lost, Dak. Yeah, lost Dak for the season and immediately traded Antonio Gibson for Jared Goff. Now, I get it. You, you're you missing a quarterback, but uh, Antonio Gibson is a, is a reasonable talent. Top 30 running back. Top 25 even. He's, top, he's running back 24 right now. A little bit of upside on that offense. Uh, just wait. 
until someone drops a quarterback. I mean, it's a 12 team league. It's not super flex. Just, just wait till someone drops a quarterback, man. Yeah, I know. In fact, uh, in our league, one guy in order to, uh, strategize to block another player in, in the thinking that, uh, the Bills and Titans game was not going to be played. Uh, one, uh, opponent of another opponent got the idea. Well, if I scoop all his quarterbacks, he won't have a quarterback to play because he happened to have Ryan Tannehill and Josh Allen on his team. So we'd have to pick up basically, um, Kyle Allen, I think was the only guy left, maybe another one. So, uh, basically after waiver day, this guy's going to have to drop some of the quarterbacks. I don't know how many quarterbacks he got about six of them. He has five quarterbacks. Uh, and John, are you, I should mention that John and I are also in this very same league. Uh, John, uh, you want to weigh in on this, on this trade? Uh, it's already been said. It's, it was, uh, a panic move. Um, understandable the the thought process behind it but uh there was a big discussion in the chat about you know the one one manager picking up five six qbs um and he's not holding them obviously so uh that was a wait and see move um made a little bit too quickly uh, and lost a lot of value on antonio gibson there yeah i have to say uh, when it comes to trades like this um kev uh, you make mention, and this is kind of like something that we can pass on to our listeners who aren't in our league about making trades. And you kind of have a rule of thumb here: is that do do not make trades before waiver day. Is that is that what I'm saying? It's like when what is the best day to make a trade in season? With you know, it's Tuesday, it, Wednesday, like right after waivers. Yeah, I think Tuesday, Wednesday after waivers, you clear up. You know, well, what are the holes on my team? Maybe I could pick up this dude to patch up a hole. Maybe I could scoop this dude who's who you know might be left out there and has a little bit of value i can include them in a trade if i have to tuesday wednesday even thursdays you know most people aren't playing but you know. but never never tuesday, wednesday is also when you jump on the people who have just lost all right you look at the guy whose roster is one and four you look at the guy whose roster is two and three and you say hey i'll take julio jones from you because your team stinks here's robbie anderson and then you win your league. Yeah, it's, uh, actually, that's that's. I, I find it hard to part with Robbie Anderson at the moment. <laughs> for, for even Julio, because uh, I don't know, Robbie Anderson's so hot right now. But but you're right. You know, it's you could easily drag me into a trade like that because uh, Robbie Anderson looks good. Right. Let's say you picked up. You know, you off waivers. You could pick up like Chase Claypool. You go. Here's Robbie Anderson. Here's Chase Claypool. Give me Julio. Done and done. All right. Well, that is the Fantasy Edge, folks, for uh, week six. Uh, in preparation of week six, uh, a little bit of a lively discussion this week. Um, next week, uh, we'll see you in week seven. I'm Richard Seville for Jonathan Chan and Kevin Wo. Uh, join us again next week on the Fantasy Edge. Take care, everybody, and good luck week six.